हेलो अंबरदास सर आवाज ये तो है ना सर ओके हेलो सर तुम आवाज ब्रेक होतो है मैडम आवाज देता आता बीना मैडम बीना मैडम कैन यू हियर मी यस यस आई कैन हियर यू सर ओके ठीक है यस मीनाक्षी मैडम इज आल्सो देयर एंड कल्पक चौहान सर इज आल्सो Can you both hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Sir. Kalpak Chauhan sir, you can uh, put on your video. Yeah. And check whether PPTs are okay or not. Are you able to see? Yes. Yes. Here. Okay. Can we start at three o'clock? Yes. Okay. All right. Tina, madam. Ha, sir. Ha. Tina, Tina, Chaudhary, upon second admit, karo. Jaudhe ahet jaudhe. And. Ha, mommy, you mala ekda vichar the. Can I start? Then then I will start. Maje kai tu mala azu ekat admit karay chote na speaker ke azu you have a team or something? No. No, no, no. He is the only speaker. Okay. Few more okay. speakers also yes. may join for just. Okay. Yes. The three was the dot. Suru karu yet, sir. Yes. Okay. Just a minute before we will admit everyone. Yes. Hello. Ah, please share your presentation. Yeah, I'll share my presentation. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, yes. my presentation. Yes. yes. Maybe you can put it in presentation mode. Yes. And I'm really sorry for the time delay because of some network issues. Since morning we are facing 
Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I mean, it happens in such kind of events. हाँ सर हेलो सर बोला हाँ हाँ यू मे स्टार्ट काफी सुपन का काम यस यस ओके ओके अ वेरी बॉम गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीवन आई होप यू ऑल हैड अ वेरी ग्रेट लंच I would like to welcome all the participants to session three of day three of our Atal FDP Design Thinking. It's my great pleasure to welcome our guest speaker for the session, Mr. Kalpak Chavan, and he will be delivering a session on a very important topic of storyboarding and story. With an experience of around ten years. Mr. Kalpak is actively engaged in management consulting, design thinking, business analysis, and solution development across global banking, investment banking, trade and finance in IT sectors. Currently, he is associated with the global banking major, PNB Paribas. Kalpak has previously worked with Accenture, HDFC Bank, Collabra, Philips. Adani, Wilmer, Mahindra, and Mahindra. Mr. Kalpak is the principal founder of Mumbai-based startup Beehiver in the space of lifestyle, mental health, and conversation. As a design thinking coach, Mr. Kalpak has curated and executed interactive workshops on design thinking for business innovation in Mumbai, Bangalore, and Pune, and trained around hundred. plus professionals in business plan and business model development and design thinking for innovation mr kalpak is an active agile coach and practitioner certified by scrum alliance and scrum.org with a management degree in marketing and business design thinking from mumbai's velenkar institute of management and research mr kalpak is an engineer in computers and passionate about books writing coaching and traveling 
One of the feather in his cap is that Mr. Kalpak is a certified global citizen leader by Center of Creative Leadership, USA. Mr. Kalpak, we are very fortunate to have you as one of the guest speaker for today's afternoon session. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Over to you, Mr. Kalpak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, uh, Professor Pino, ma'am. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, thank you, everyone, I think, uh, for uh, inviting me here, especially, uh, I think, Meenakshi, ma'am, for taking this in initiative to connect. And uh, this is, I think, our second uh, uh, coming together to connect to a design thinking. But uh, we do all this thanks even probably at the, uh, at the end of the uh, session. Uh, well, uh, Welcome to all of you. I can see around uh, 63 participants uh, who are already present and uh, I'm sure a uh, few more are getting added uh, while we are talking. Uh, well, this is the slot which I hate the most. That is the slot after lunch because uh, we all have this tendency to definitely, you know, be a little bit inactive. Uh, post the lunch and I'm sure you you might have had a good lunch and you all are attending the design thinking sessions throughout the week so uh, I assure you one thing I'll not make it boring I'll not make you hear probably the same things which you all might have heard about design thinking so I won't go about what is design thinking and you know of course we'll touch base but uh, my idea you know, in this one, one and a half hour session, I'm sure a lot of uh, uh, many participants here, you all are uh, professors, faculties, experts in your own domain. So I think it's, it's an honor for me as well to conduct this session uh, for you um, and share my knowledge with you. So I assure you that I'll keep it a bit interactive in the sense that I might just pass on a question here and there. and you are feel free you know to just write down your question in the chat box or your thought process if you have to probably shed some light somewhere uh had this been a kind of a in-person session uh, i'm sure uh, uh, we could have done a lot more stuff when it comes to storyboarding because in the entire design thinking uh i would say practice uh, storyboarding or storytelling is my favorite. It's my favorite because uh, I think, and this is my personal opinion, that the entire crux of the solution which we are going to prepare in our design thinking uh, practice is somewhere in this storyboard or in storytelling. And I'll touch base upon it, why it is important or how do we do it? And I'll also mention a some tools which probably um, you all can use if you all are independent practitioners or if you all will be coaching your students or anybody else on design thinking. Because I have been using, I have been uh, uh, actively consulting on design thinking and I have been using a tool often. So I can of course share my experience on that. But above all, like I don't want to make it too complicated because it's just one, one and a half hour, 90 minutes. I want to stick to the essence of what a storyboard is, you know. I want to stick to the essence of what does storytelling mean. Because quintessentially, there are a lot of similarities with what you might perceive as what is storytelling um, and what storytelling of design thinking probably is, okay. But there are differences also. So I'll share some you know, some light on uh, that, like what are the differences um, and how do we actually go about it, you know. Now, before we get into that, before we start uh, talking about it, uh, let me ask you a simple question. First of all, hey, my first question, uh, did anyone of you get a chance to read the case study of Airbnb? If, uh, if which, which I think uh, Professor Amadas might have shared the URL. It was a short article. Uh, did you, any one of you, got an opportunity to probably go through that article? Okay, I, I can see uh, some of the participants have already mentioned that yes, they have read it. Meenakshi has written. 
she has read it good uh thank you uh yes others have also mentioned that they have read it very good i'm happy that uh, some of you have already read the pre read for those who haven't read uh let me make it a little bit easier and simpler so that because i'll be uh, thank you uh, shitul men and ma'am uh, vandana sharma thank you that you all have read it in a very simple in a very uh, specific way i'm going to tell you about this case study the reason why i shared airbnb's case study because uh, i have a personal i would of course not personal but professional connection but i personally know some people from the airbnb team uh, who had worked in the past on the design thinking assignments and i have had an absolute privilege to uh, have had many conversations with them in uh, multiple forums which i have visited so from personal experience i'll tell you what exactly happened and how it happened so as you might have heard or you might have read in the case study of airbnb there was a downfall right there was a downfall in number of states uh, the app was not actually open that time for angel investors uh, airbnb app i'm sure everybody of you are aware it's an aggregator yeah there is a somebody who is a buyer who wants to buy a property or rent out a property basically a customer or typical buyer then there is a seller who is either leasing his property renting out his property you know like who wants somebody to subscribe to his property so on and so forth so are we clear so it's an aggregator model airbnb just like any other e-commerce platform it is an e-commerce of real estate and as you might have read in the case study there was definitely a time in the graph where the sales have plunged really low you know uh they have plunged really low now as you might have read and it's very popular that the team employed or the team executed or the team implemented design thinking uh in their overall scheme of things i'm not saying design thinking was only one responsible for bringing them out their you know a uh, short low phase there were other things also but design thinking was a key key thing and i'll tell you what happened actually i'm sure uh, it is mentioned in that case study but i uh, I'll, i'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, so they understood the problem that what is happening first of all in terms of okay first of all your sales are going down the next important thing for them and i'm sure by now you might be might have heard or studied or i'm sure the earlier speakers in so many sessions might have told you about the whole design thinking life cycle uh, i'll not repeat all that again but yes they tried to figure out what is the problem okay they went to the actual uh, actual customers and here by customer i'm not saying just the buyer or the person who is renting out but also somebody who is leasing out the property okay so they went to both these kind of people and they tried to figure out what information they could figure out and at this step they came up with a solution they implemented the solution and they started prototyping all they started iterating on it within a span of 3 to 6 months there were results now uh there was this gentleman from airbnb uh with whom i i was connected to who was also actively involved in the subsequent iterations of this case one of the thing which he had personally told me that you know what what really helped i think by now you might have understood that one of the things which they changed was the quality of pictures so in that case study also it might have been mentioned and if, even if you google airbnb you might read that the quality of pictures was one point so what they did they brought dslrs and they clicked real time good images dslr based pictures of the property who they of of the person who was renting out or selling or whatever it is you know and there was the first upswing of the sales so this was the first thing that is the quality of pictures then there were other things also like you know replacing thumb by a love sign and all that i mean heart sign and all that let's come back to the first point 
that is the quality of pictures now this was this is a very important point for me huh? because look at it now today uh, we all are doing a work from home mode i'm sure we are in this whole gambit of work from home study from home teach from home whatever you can call it as we all are in the internet we all at the mercy of internet actually <laughs> today if the internet goes down we won't be able to connect the way we are connected right now or you know we vit won't be able to conduct such a wonderful uh, atal program for design thinking so we are literally at the mercy of internet now that itself started right back then when the whole bit of taking the pictures uploading the right quality pictures on internet on airbnb app this was like came in the spurts of the discussion now what this person from the team of airbnb you know categorically told me was in their entire cabin they had huge storyboards you know or let me use the word forget about storyboard i have not used i'll say white boards you know they were huge white boards they were i think like like a one complete room was filled with white boards that room was a specific purpose what they used to do is we all use markers right they just used to take the markers and try to scribble things. now when they try to scribble things out of course i mean whatever comes to your mind just scribble it whatever uh, you know what is your top of the mind so you have gone and you have met the observer or the you can say the audience or let us say in, we are since we are talking about airbnb a person who is renting out his property you have gone and met him now after the entire interview which you have done with him you have certain observations now this guy will come to the same room and will just try to scribble out will just try to scribble out whatever comes to his mind whatever comes to his mind so that was the start of the overall activity which we are going to define in today's session session that is storyboard now it was a process first thing was literally writing down scribbling down drawing maybe you know or just sketching whatever comes to your mind and placing those things on a storyboard no they need not be a pattern to it hello i'm not talking about a pattern yet we'll come to the pattern later on right now i'm just talking about a sequence of things or whatever comes to your mind your mind may go haywire so let us say i am the design thinking consultant of airbnb i'm going to the seller's house i'm observing him i'm observing his property what he has he has a shell he has a you know a curtain he has a painting he has a bed he has whatever it is and he's just observing things and he is wondering oh so this is not as bad as it looks like in the pictures he is observing all of this okay now he comes back and of course in this he is also having the interview session with the uh, seller or the person who is leasing out the property uh, the owner and he comes back and he scribbles down or rather i come back and i scribble down and i scribble down i just write down whatever comes to mind i can just write down neat and clean property i can just write down a very good bookshelf i can just write down all whatever comes to mind on that particular you can say a uh, storyboard or rather whiteboard okay now that is the start of you can say aggregate all your first observations on your blueprint it can be as limenish it can be as hevaya as it can be but believe me whatever time i spend i spend just 5 minutes or i may spend just half an hour or you know i may spend a lot of time on this if i'm a, if i'm a novice person if i'm somebody who is first time doing an activity like if we probably ask a student to do it uh, who has not done such kind of a thing before he may take a longer time but if you are an experienced person you will start putting your thoughts in whatever manner you want quickly now that's the beginning and that's where you start some of you may call it hey, you are just scribbling down but no what he is actually starting or what he is beginning to start is in technical terms 
what he is trying to mention there are called characters and the whole version of things which he has put on the storyboard as he is scribbling his writing the level 0 of a prototype let me try and say because we have not yet iterated we have not yet brainstormed we have not yet discussed we have not yet given it a pattern we have just scribbled it out that is called probably a level of a prototype in technical term but otherwise if you ask me if let us say if you and me don't know design thinking today i can also call it as a level 2 level 0 or a grandmother's story because we have hearing about stories since our grandmother's time right when um, as kids we have been often told stories by our parents or our grandparents and we have grown up reading stories we have grown up reading books we have grown up watching movies where there are stories now why do that remains here because we visualize right today if 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 i watch a movie bahubali and if i say that bahubali is one of my favorite why because the entire story start to end or the entire you know the characters and all that has remained with me because visually it has appeal so it works for me it really works for me today if somebody asks me that for, for example have you seen shole i would say yes i have seen shole i remember every scene of shole i do i might have not read an ebook of design thinking but i would say yes i have i, I can tell how exactly shole uh, starts from end it is why because we have visualized it and we all have that innate capacity that since childhood consciously subconsciously we can visualize things and believe me friends if you all present out here if you all are on the same page as mine if you all can visualize what you all are actually thinking and that i believe is the start of this entire story body somebody is mentioning uh, manju is mentioning that my voice is breaking is it still breaking or is it clear or how is it it is clear no problem <laughs> okay thank you thank you so we were on so so right now we have just set the premise of what we are going to discuss in next 15 minutes on these slides but with the help of 15 to 30 minutes but with the help of the airbnb case study so coming back i mentioned some two heavy words we i mentioned ground zero prototype but let me come back to again to the same thing that scribbling on that whiteboard is nothing but a story a simple laymanish story so what is probably you know the meaning of storyboarding for me if you ask me in simple words storyboarding is a visually intuitive process of narrating an idea storyboarding for me i mean there can be n number of definitions there, there is of course a standard definition which is presented by ideo you can always google that but you will even in that definition you will find two words one is intuitive one is visual and one is narrative these are three strong words intuitive visual narrative now let's talk about these three words while we are talking about and i would love to know from you what do you mean by intuition anybody would like to take this up anybody would like to just share their thoughts what do you mean by intuition yes fantastic i think some of them have really um not fallen asleep i'm very happy but dr tasneem and manju and i think you all everybody i think has been right there you know they 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 we 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 have a very powerful subconscious mind in other words i'm sure we all know that we have a very powerful subconscious mind we all agree that in the in childhood or even during any exam which we give we used to be told if you want 90% just write 90% and put that 90% where you sleep every morning when you get up look at that 90% before night when you sleep just look at that 90% and sleep why because when you sleep your subconscious is most active and that 90% is imbibed in your mind so that you will be propelled to go in that direction so a lot of people have written gut feeling 
lot of people have written six sense a lot of people have written inner voice yes that is what we are talking about intuition so folks intuition is a very integral part of your entire design thinking activity and you know that is the reason why i love design thinking a lot of people ask me in my uh, 10 years of practice now uh, and especially in the last four years since i have been also practicing agile a lot of people ask me what is the difference between agile and design thinking then what is this and there is a scrum framework there is design thing what 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 are we talking about it is one and the same but i always tell them that because i myself i am a scrum certified i i coach on scrum but then you know i work on scrum framework but let me tell you folks design thinking is way different the process which you have seen in last few expert sessions and i'm sure you might have now it might be imprinted on your mind that process might be similar to a waterfall or a scrum or whatever it is i will not deny or i will not uh, you know argue on that what you will not see in other models is the creative and intuitive aspect of design thinking this is the one of the only practices in a proper legitimate personal and professional i would say uh, development of your of you know whether it is problem solving or whatever it is whether it's creating your own business intuitiveness is something which is not present in many models i haven't seen it in many models there there are some models but design thinking model or design thinking practice is what i believe is largely based on intuition and i'm sure the other experts have might also also touch based a little bit on this and i'm reiterating this because this is very important in storyboard this is the crux of the entire storyboarding or storytelling activity so as you a lot of men people mention gut feeling Sixth sense. Come back to the Airbnb story. I'm the design thinking consultant for Airbnb. I'm going to the sellers or the owners' house. I'm observing the things. What if my first intuition says, "Hello, ये घर तो इतना अच्छा है. I mean, it's such a lovely house. It's uh, why it is not getting sold off. I mean, either there must be some problem with the app, or the seller is not giving the right information." my first gut feeling or my intuitive ability tells me that we have to capture this information we have to capture and that's where the moment you go to your office to your whiteboard when you start scribbling that's when your intuitive feelings come into picture and how do you do it visually either you do a small you know like a small like some uh, we'll come to what what are those called as in technical terms but some pictures you draw and visually you try to put that whatever is coming as a first instinct in your mind as an in, inner feeling or gut feeling or somebody said inner voice exactly that's what i'm talking about when you sit on the kbc hot seat and the first option which gut feeling may tell you is b but maybe your brain is telling d but hello my gut feeling is telling me b and if i lock it and if i win i know that it is working for me so technically all i'm talking about is storytelling has to start with intuitively understanding the the whole premise of your problem and that's where that's where storyboarding starts begins okay and hence even in this uh, in this sentence which they have mentioned here about why do we do storytelling activity they have word use the word intuitive even if you somebody ask you to define i would recommend use these three words intuitive visual and narrative so we understand what is intuitive something which innately comes in your mind the moment you understand the entire problem the moment you have done your interview technique the moment you have you know been there and done with your observation and now you're back on your office as a design thinking consultant intuitive Second, let's come on the second point, visual. Now, this is not very difficult to understand because, uh, as I just mentioned, you may remember. I'm sure. I mean, with due respect to all uh, the doctors and faculties here, uh, I'm sure we all have read e-books. But I'm, I still bet you all would remember that movie, your favorite movie, which you have seen, whether it's Shole or any of your English movies or Marathi films. you would remember every dialogue of it 
because you have seen it. Yes, ebook, we will remember, no doubt about it, but that movie will be imprinted in your mind. Ebook will still take some time. Okay, let me just remember what it is, but that movie will be starkly present. So I'm sure you all would agree that whatever visually appeals to us stays with us forever. Exactly, true visuals we do remember. And you know, not only that, I would also tell you, it gives a premise for a discussion. Today, print media is literally going off. I'm sure a lot of people might be aware newspapers like Mumbai Mirror and Pune Mirror are getting closed. Print media is nowhere. Why? Because today you have Instagram. Today you, we have, uh, you know, Times Now and all that. Why? Because journalism has become all visual. Today, the 9 p.m. slot, which an Arnab Goswami commands, for example, sorry if anybody is irked to quote him, but if he commands a specific price for that amount, why? Because 9 p.m. slot is very, what do you say, attractive to me as an audience. Even in the COVID times, there were so many other stories making up the round. There was Sushant Singh's case, then there were some other cases and so many. Why? Because it was visually showed to you. That was a story that remained in our mind. Today, of course, we know that there is a farmer's protest going on all around the country. You all are watching it on news, news channels and that, that's being shown to you in a form of a story by the news media. So today, print media, tell me how many, I mean, I do read, of course, I do in the morning, me and my mom, dad, we do read newspapers, but I'm not sure there are many people who still read newspapers. A lot of us are very attuned to, okay, we'll open probably NDTV or CN, CNN or Times Now because they are giving me a better um, better idea. So that is the visual part of it. If that makes me tell a particular story and I'm convinced, I'll be more than happy to remember it. And that, I believe, is the first part. Today, why Instagram is famous? Because it tells you a story you might have seen the Instagram stories or our WhatsApp stories. Why? People view it, right? It remind, it remembers in their minds. So that again is the crux of the, or the second important parameter I, uh, according to me, in the storyboarding definition, that is visual. Visually appealing. Come back to the design thinking. I'll wear the design thinking hat again. I go back to the seller of Airbnb. I tell them, I look and observe. Now, what do I do? When I come back on my working desk, I'll try to scribble. Now, as a design thinking consultant, whatever comes to your mind, intuitively, I'll try to show. So what I'll try to show, I'll try to show very nice flat. I'll try to show a bookshelf. I'll try to show some paintings because that is in my top of the mind. That is, you can say, visually appealing to me. So I'll start putting that on my story or my whiteboard. So second is visual. Now, I may write text also there, no doubt about it. But you know, text, I will be very precise. I'm not saying I'm replacing text. Huh? In nowhere, don't quote me wrong, I'm not saying that we are removing or we are replacing text in any form. Text is required. But I'll tell you what kind of text. Because when we will understand the technique of storyboarding in detail in the next few minutes, uh, we'll see what text actually we need. Okay? But yes, it's at the end of visual which matters. So visual. And the third and the most important thing, the third word of a definition, narrative. So can you also tell me what, what, what do you mean by narrative? Just like you all told me about intuitive. What is that one thing which comes, because I'm sure you all uh, might have used the word narrative every time and again in your conversation. So can, can somebody just, yes. Not narrator. I'm not talking about narrator. I'm talking about, yes. Somebody has already started writing the right word. Narrative. So just writing, yes. Whatever story, yes. Perfect. Describe. Underlying theme, yeah. I think Nalin Khan, a lot of you are bang on. Description in own perspective, perfect. I think Prachit has a very um, interesting point. The way someone will narrate, perfect. I would suggest if you all mute, because uh, it would just help. <laughs> the way someone will narrate, perfect. Andrela, I think to the point. 
narrative, description and own perspective. I love this word, controlling. Okay, definitely a point taken, controlling. Okay, uh, you all are absolutely, uh, I would say, perfectly right in your own, uh, uh, yeah, I would request you all to mute your mic. Uh, you all are absolutely bang on when you all mentioned about narrative. Uh, a lot of people mentioned the word plot. I love that word, plot. A lot of you mentioned, um, I think Prachi mentioned, describing one's own perspective. See, narrative, when you all, I'm sure you all uh, might have, might be reading or into reading, and you all might have often read, kuch nahi to, you all might have definitely read newspapers or stories or whatever. You might often see that what, whenever you read something, you will see a perspective of the reader in it. Even today, journalism, when we talk about, we do have an editorial page where the chief editor or the head editor of the newspaper or the whatever the news board is, he will throw his perspective. You know, that's why he's called the chief editor. He will throw his perspective. He'll throw his brief about what this story is all about. Now, that's narrator. So that's a perspective. That's bringing a perspective to your whole, you know, whole thoughts and ideas. And that's why I believe, my friends, it becomes the third and the most important pillar of our storyboarding activity. First is visual, sorry, first is intuitive, second is visual, and third is narrator. Again, I'm not talking about narration or narrator. Of course, narration, narrator, there would be somebody who will narrate, there will be somebody who will do the narration, but I'm talking about narrative. Narrative is a perspective. Narrative is giving a layer to your story. Narrative is bringing a pattern to your thoughts. Narrative is arranging all your thoughts in a disciplined manner. That's narrative. And that, my friends, will bring you to a something which we call it as a story or a storyboard, you know, or a plot, like somebody said, or I would use now the word again for the second time, kind of a prototype, a level zero prototype. <laughs> Sorry. No, but prototype, I don't want you to always confuse by something called as a product or a service always, okay? Prototype at the end of the day is going to be your outcome. Prototype at the end of this entire design thinking process, which you are going to do, is going to be the outcome of your process. It can be an idea, your business commercially viable product idea, pro commercially viable service idea, commercially viable, uh, you can say, an engagement. It can be anything. So don't always say that prototype has to be a product product. Prototype can be teaching. Now today, if in Vidya Lankar, if, if a faculty decides that after completing, this is the way I'm going to deliver a session, that is a prototype. If VIT comes up with, you know, a kind of a, an experience in education, that is a prototype. Prototype can be an experience. This can be a service. It can be anything. And hence, I'm using the word prototype here because that somewhere shapes up at the end of your storyboard or at the end of your story time, right? Yes, somebody has rightly said connecting the connecting thoughts, Vandana is bang on. Now let's come back to our Airbnb. This is the reason why I'd ask you all to use, read the case study. Coming back to the Airbnb uh, story, um, again, I'm the design thinking consultant. I wear this hat, I go back to the seller. I observe things. I'm observing his flat. Again, I'm observing, wow, I mean, it's such a good house. I, I, I am, I'm loving his house and why his house is not selling on my app, right? That is the whole case studio is all about. Why the sales are not happening. And that's when, when I come back to my story or whiteboard and when I start scribbling down, scribbling down is my intuition, visually, so two of my words are already taken. I keep doing this. I do it two, three times. Now, when I'm doing two, three times, I'm visiting all whatever I've done twice or thrice. Now, when I say I, for simplistic 
just to make our discussion simpler, I'm saying I, but in the actual industry, uh, because uh, where we actually do this, it's not just I, but it is a team of storyboarders or storytellers, or you can say the design thinkers. They come together. So they will be re revisiting each part of your, you know, uh, I mean, I'll also use very slightly, I'll introduce the word character here. I'll come to the character word a little bit later in our slide, but yeah, character here. Uh, I'll be visiting each character. I'll be visiting each, each, part of what I have just visually, you know, stamped on that whiteboard. And at the end, I'll come to a prototype. This is like kind of a, uh, you know, a idea which is getting formed, a product idea getting formed, a service idea getting formed, and that's it. So when I'm the Airbnb design thinker, I start drawing very nicely, you know, uh, some really nice flats. I write there certain keywords like neat apartment. And I'll draw a character. That character would be the seller because many uska interview liya, right? I need to draw him because he's a part of it. He's a very a part of our of our entire activity because he has given me inputs. He was present at the uh, seller. He's a seller. He's a very important. I'll tell you what that word is called, but you all might have guessed. It is all called an actor. I'm sure you might have been wary of the terms like actor, character, often. But we'll kind of streamline it when we'll come to that slide. But um, yeah, so this is the way it will begin. Now, coming back to my desk, I'll start doing all this and now I'll connect the dots. And what comes to me is a prototype. Now, at this point, I also would want to, of course, I mean, this slide is, uh, uh, see, I'm not reading out this slide, okay? I mean, it's, it's quite evident which we read. Why do we this activity? But we'll, I'll come to this slide uh, one, one second, probably at the end. When to do this act? Now, this is more, most important. I would say a million dollar question. Now, uh, see, to do this activity, which we are doing right now, which we are discussing right now, you need to know what the problem is. You can't just go so haywire. You can't just start right from the beginning. You should get a sense of it. Now, Airbnb case tell me one thing we know that the sales were low right but can we start storyboarding or storytelling or you know visually putting things or i'm also using another word or i'm introducing another word user journey can i start just putting user journey right away right from the beginning no hello i don't know i've not met the seller i have not gone there on the site i have not seen what is actually happening to my actors and characters so how can I just start doing it? So it is very important for you to know when to do this activity. And I, I somehow feel a creative design thinker would give some benefit of time in, in this whole scheduling. If you ask me, I would suggest one should understand the problem first. Now, I have a little bit of argument even here on this. I don't completely buy in this sentence because one may not understand the problem 100% in the one go. It is a process. Actual design thinking, which we follow, which we practice in the industry, I'm sure a lot of industry people would be here, you all would agree to me, it's a process. It's, it's from three months to six months to a year or two years process. I know I have done it for one of the clients which I've worked. It was a two years consulting activity. And every month, you know, the storyboard was renewed. So my only point which I want to highlight here is that don't be under the assumption that you will understand the problem at one go. No, that's not going to happen. You may understand the problem in bits and pieces. Give it some time. But the moment you have a fair idea, what you're like what we were talking about intuitiveness, right? The moment you get the first grasp of it, like, okay, this is the scenario. Go to your whiteboard and start. Start the act. So this is, I would say, the right point of, you know, starting the act. Now, uh, you might see uh, the duration here. They have mentioned 20 minutes. Uh, this is the officially described duration. Now, obviously, this is not the time box, okay? Uh, it depends from organization to organization. So this duration is for a design thinking activity. If I'm doing, uh, let us say, if I'm planning to do a design thinking process, right from start, you know, the um, right from the empathy to the actual iteration, 
in the last model, if I'm doing, let us say, in a span of three hours, or two to three hours, I would say, 20 to 30 minutes would be on storyboarding to start. Okay, and it will be an iteration. That is the reason why I'm saying the first, the time when your 20 to 30 minutes will literally go in this activity of storyboard, you know. Now, <clears throat> I would also use, well, introduce you one more word here. I've been just telling you that as an Airbnb design consultant, I will come to my desk. I will start visually scribbling something, whatever intuitively comes to your mind, and then I'll connect the dots. So intuitive, visual, narrative, got it, is equal to, I'm telling you, this is nothing but storytelling or storyboard. This is kind of a laminish example of a storyboard. And what comes out is a prototype of your idea. It has to be tested. Likewise, it has to, for you, as a design thinking consultant or a practitioner or a faculty to come up with a convincing prototype. Your storyboard should be really good. And by really good, meaning it has to be enhanced. Come on, you have started with scribbling, but that scribbling will not be your, you know, you can't base your entire commercially viable prototype on that scribbling. You have to enhance it, right? You have to enhance it. And that's where, when we talk about enhancing a storyboard, that's where the other concepts comes into picture of storyboarding. I'll come to this slide. And you will see here, don't go much on the jargons, but get the chucks of it. First is identify what will be the characters. Now here, of course, will be, as you see on the right-hand side, somebody is drawn. See, you don't need to be a sketcher, okay? You don't need to be a painter. You don't need to be a, you don't need to be perfect in drawing. I can draw, I'm, bad in drawing. I'm very bad. Drawing is not my cup of tea. <laughs> but don't worry, there are tools who do it. So there is a storyboarder tool, which I often use. And if you all want, you all can, I'll just, uh, I'm just, since I've mentioned about, since I'm mentioning, you all can always go on storyboarder. I've used it. This is a, a, like an open source tool. A lot of companies have their own tools. You know, if you don't want a storyboarder, you all can simply use you know, I have seen, I have worked in corporates where simple post-its and markers and whiteboard has been sufficient. You don't need to have extra wagon tools to do your, you know, so many storyboards. Storyboarder to, yeah, Mural is perfect. Mural is one of the best. I've used that and it, it gives you a lot of, uh, you know, um, see every story, that's what I'm telling. Every tool will give you things which enhance your story, which will enhance your entire plot. Why do you need to do that? Simple, because your entire prototype, which is coming out of it, should have a, you know, a, a strength in it. Otherwise, if you have just scribbled things out, it's not going to help. That's why, first is identify. Identify who are the characters. So can you tell me what can be, who will be the characters in our example, which we are discussing, Airbnb case. When I've gone to the, um, uh, to the, to the place of the person who's renting out the property, who will be my character? Yes, perfect. Property owners will be my characters. Um, maybe the renters, yes, somebody, absolutely, those will be your characters. So you need to know your characters. You need to know around whom you all are going to build the story. And that's probably is the start of your entire activity. Now, see, I, 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 once you know the characters, then you all are completely on your own. Then you have to, yeah, broker. Broker will also be a part of it. Airbnb as an app, also you can put it as a, it's a platform. It's an aggregator model. Even that can be one of your, you know, uh, you can say Airbnb will be an interface rather, um, more like a setting, you know. But characters would be like what you rightly said, a broker, um, somebody like a um, property owner, you know, a, a renter, a person like you and me, probably who's renting out, yes, those would be the characters. So it's important to accurately, state concern, accurately identify these characters, accurately identify what will be your interface, what will be your setting, and then start designing your scene. Now, by scenes, don't get very like, oh, what is the scenes all about? Have I to have a do I need to really create scenes? No. As I told you, 
when you go to your office, the first thing you have done is scribbling. You know, just give a pattern to those scribbling. You know, design those scenes very well. So by scene, I mean his house is one of the scene where there is everything is neat and tidy. Probably one scene can be, why am I not liking his house? Why? Because what am I as a renter or as somebody who's trying to subscribe to his property? Am I seeing those exact pictures? No, I'm seeing very dull images, right? I'm seeing very pathetic images on Airbnb. So I'm not liking that. So this can be also one scene. What do we do now? What did Airbnb did? They went with DSLRs. They clicked right pictures, the real good quality pictures, and they uploaded on internet or NBRB the right quality pictures. And that can be one of your scene. One of your scene can be that now, as a, for example, if you're owning or if you're renting out a property, you'll see, wow, these are amazing pictures. Now I'm buying. So this is the way your story is going to come. And this will not be possible if you don't know. Who are your story characters? Like who, who, who is your character? They can be one, they can be multiple. But there would be one main character. Of course, who would be like present on all your, of course, there can be multiple mains also. I don't deny that. But there should be an interface. Now here interface or a setting would be Airbnb. And you connect the dots of the narrative, like what we mentioned, narrative is an important part. And you create a story. Now this is the start of it. <laughs> this is one of the story which we just discussed. And as I told you, this was not the only reason why Airbnb came out of that uh, situation. There were multiple design thinking things done to Airbnb. This was one of the stories. Likewise, as a design thinking consultant, you can create multiple such stories for your client, for your, and this is how the actual industry process works. You need to have a storybook which will have multiple storyboards. Not all stories will give you, okay, let me come to this, let me touch base on this. Do you think all your stories will give you the right answer? Do you really think? No. You know, we all, no movie has a right, we all see films, right? Uh, some of the films have good endings, some of the films don't have good endings. Uh, some of the films are just open to interpretation. Not all films are where, where we see that there is a conclusive event. Likewise, not all stories will give you the idea of a commercially viable prototype. No. At least such stories, like some key stories, which will be definitely can be translated in your actual, you can say, prototype problem. So first is identify and then is illustrate. Now here you can make You can give a pattern. You can see you make use of neural storyboard or, or things, whichever you can. Okay. Um, again, we hire people who are designers sometimes who are good at story designing and storyboarding, who can help us illustrate it in a very nice way. They have mentioned here like a comic strip. Why? Because you know anything which is funny or if it is shown in a very lighter way is remembered and makes it, it becomes more interesting you know very visual you should have very specific thoughts like action words what do you mean the action words like for example the action can be say i am the property again coming back to airbnb case i am the renter okay i'm renting out the property one of the action would be i'll be overwhelmed to see oh wow this is a wonderful property why didn't I come across this property on Airbnb? I go and rent out this property. So this can be one of my action, which I can depict there. You know, are you with me? You get my point what I'm trying to say. So we have to understand, we have to depict those actions on your storybook. And that will happen only when, you know, you have a fair idea about what your characters are talking to each other, how, effectively you are connecting the dots and that's what illustrate is all about give labels so you remember uh, i mentioned at the start of the session uh, that i'm not saying on i'm not proposing that hello we are not replacing text 
today if you go on instagram you will not see that um, you you won't see only pictures instagram is only about pictures no you will see hashtags at the end of every uh, picture which you upload there will be hashtags there will be some caption now that the power of hashtags is huge and because every hashtag attracts an audience hashtag you know happy mood is a very powerful hashtag it might be used by millions of people similarly the labels which you give to your story has to be attractive because those labels are going to depict your journey okay again i'll be coming to the word user journey a little bit later when we are kind of giving a more deeper meaning to storyboarding but yes labeling would be the uh, you know uh, very key aspect of it and each person playbacks their storyboard so yeah some of these questions which you should ask as a storyboarder as you are dealing with storyboards that what common elements are shared across multiple stories now as i told you there can be multiple stories for a single airbnb problem what are the commonalities what are the what is the central hook that you have to bind them together okay how might you convert your stories into a shared vision vision of your users future experience see you may converge or you may not it is not necessary but there will be definitely some underlying theme which will be very important like uh, you know for example for a um, e-commerce platform like flipkart or amazon when you go on amazon today you just make a search of let us say uh, uh, just for the um, help of um, ladies if you are make a search for ornaments for example immediate suggestions you will see of probably a salwar kameez or anything which is ladies apparel why now that is not something which you have searched that has come based on your search right that is based on your now that is what amazon does for you because it is tracking your user journey it is tracking what you are doing out there and based on that it is giving you prediction because it knows that it should show you what you need to see you know so that is where this whole design thinking comes into picture or this or i would use the word storyboarding comes into picture because when you go there on the amazon and search for something there is some rational in your mind because of which you are searching so hence i would use the word um, i mean i would again i reiterate the word user journey here but yes how might you converge your stories and what assumptions exist in your storyboards that your team still needs to validate okay let me get this point straight you might create 50 different storyboards but all needs to be validated you know not every storyboard as i told you as some of you rightly pointed out will lead to any conclusive action some of them will be discarded and that's where your validation technique comes into picture you need to go and validate now this case which we just saw we just built a prototype of airbnb when we said we went to the house we uploaded good quality pictures okay and we saw that the sale is happening this is one story do you all agree so the start of the story is you go to the um, to the uh, seller's house you could click good pictures you upload the high quality pictures the one scene will be that your uh, you as a renter will watch those pictures will click on buy and a sale is done that probably can be one end of the story now what i'm trying to tell you is there can be n number of such stories but you need to validate this this story which you have just formed needs to be validated needs to be literally you know that is the reason why you know at the start of the story i mentioned i spoke to this airbnb design thinking consultant he told me that this story which is you can use it in your uh, seminars or sessions which you do because this is the real story this is the real design thinking airbnb story which i'm telling you where this has actually happened where the consultants actually went to the seller's property they clicked the picture so their story board actually depicted this the users reactions on the face when he saw good quality pictures and click so this has to be tested and validated right and that's where your iterative step in your design thinking pattern which you might have read in this entire week you might have heard the word iteration multiple times that's where your iteration will come into picture so you need to validate this storyboard you can't keep that storyboard and 
whiteboard. You need to validate it. You have to bring it out of your storyboard a tool and actually make your team implement. It has to be implemented. Again, I'm saying prototype can be any prototype. Prototype can be an experience. Prototype can be a service. Prototype can be a product. Now, in this case, which we are just talking, what is really a prototype? Don't you think it's an experience that as a, you know, what we have actually done, all we have done is uploaded good quality pictures. Have we built another Airbnb app so that their sales go up? No. What we have done, uploaded good quality pictures of airbnb and all our story is trying to depict is good quality pictures that's it and the user is just looking at the good quality pictures and buying that property all i'm trying to tell you is that you have to validate that user story and that user prototype in actual real world and see if it is working for you or not and that's the important uh, the crux of it there has to be multiple iterations as I told you, I work for an FMCG um, client for design thinking. Uh, it was a two years process and every storyboard had a time box for validation. The time box can go on between, you know, maybe two weeks to six months because validate, see, it all depends on the kind of, if it is an FMCG like a process where, you know, things are not always online or if it is, there is a trade cycle going on. The entire storyboarding, Validation activity will take time. Like an Airbnb, the validation can happen within maybe a week or so. So all I'm trying to tell you is that you need to kind of done. You need to validate. Without that, you have to validate your assumptions. You have to validate your narrative. You know your characters, your thought processes which you have built together. And like somebody said rightly, the inner voice which you have put together in that story. Believe me, unless you validate, you won't be able to get a sense. Of it. You know, you won't be able to get a um, idea about what that actually is. So that I believe. Is These are some do's and don'ts, of course, uh, uh, which you can always keep in mind. Um, you know, like right before you talk, there are no bad ideas. Stay focused on your users. Um, I'm sure in the design thinking explanation, which might have happened to you in this entire hotel program. You might have heard by now, I think, billion times. And I also stick to that. And this is where I introduce the word user journey. So if somebody asks me to explain storyboarding or storytelling in as many less words as possible, I'll say plotting a user journey using my using an intuitive thought process, visually visually appealing objects and narrative. Intuitive, visual, narrative. Club it together with user journey. That's your story. Nothing. Your official IDO definition will also tell you the same thing or any other definition. See, forget about the definition. What I want to tell you is what you need to know in storyboard. It has to be intuitive. You can't give away what comes in your mind when you are looking at a case. And I'm telling you, this is where design thinking primarily differentiates itself from Scrum, from Kanban, from, they are not saying they don't have brainstorming. <laughs> don't get me wrong out there. Even they have brainstorming. But the amount or the level of empathy, the level of creativity, and most importantly, the level of intuitiveness, which we have in design thinking or our storyboarding is specific that you won't find in other things or in other disciplines or in other practice. So my always, my, my daily, my, uh, you know, whenever I coach um, um, consultants or people on design thinking or whenever somebody wants to learn design thinking, I always tell them that they have to be more watchful of their thoughts. They have to really know what they're thinking. A sharp and a thinking mind would be able to accurately predict what is going on in that particular case. That that feeling comes and I would be able to accurately plot. I may not be right in the first go, I'm not saying, 
but i would have those inner feelings which will tell me that yes this is what is happening and that is the deja vu moment when i know that i have figured out what the story is and there can be n number of such gut feelings there can be n number of such intuition those need to come and that is what the design thinking is all about i would say so storyboarding if i have to again i mean coming back uh, uh, you know this first word wording again i would say that and a user journey because what you are doing at the end of the day you are plotting a user journey only you as a user uh, the buyer he is logging into that application he is checking what is happening you know he is not looking at i mean he is not able to figure out the right products then somewhere as a design thinking consultant you take the pictures of the real property you upload the right quality pictures the user again watches it and buys the property this is the entire user journey you are tracking the user user journey can also be of different type one is the really on the face or i would say the primary user journey and that user journey is nothing but your airbnb application the moment you log into the application since that login to log out that is your very typical primary user journey but this user journey what i'm talking about of storyboarding is not that user journey i mean of course it comprises of that or i would say that is just a subset this storyboarding is complete right from logging in to what you are doing as a design thinking consultant when you when you actually view the house upload the right quality pictures because this is a prototype which you are building up right you are building a commercially viable product or commercially viable experience hello you are going to monetize this this entire thing which we are talking about storyboarding today right now in our discussion we are not talking about finance anywhere but tomorrow if airbnb management says wow your the storyboarding is giving us sales let's now put it in our balance sheet and pnl you will have to account for it why because you have to account for the dslrs which you use you have to account for the people you have involved in this entire activity of going to the um, sellers you know you have to pay them right you have to pay those people who are doing this interview techniques for us airbnb management is not going to do it for you there would be a specific set of design thinking consultants or the creative team who would be doing these designs for you you have to pay them so all this has to go to pnl all this has to go to your balance balance sheet hence it is very important to account for everything because your management will ask for a um for a financial translation to this no design thinking is without a financial backing i mean uh, it is important so my only point is that is the reason why it is important to define your characters well to define your story well because when you are validating it in the market you will actually see that you know the change happening i would give you another example of a um, lot of such transformations um happening um it happened actually i would say you know uh, those scrum framework uh, how many of you all are aware i'm sure a lot of you may be aware of agile uh, agile scrum framework um it is actively used in it industries for as a software development uh, process or a pattern i'm sure many of you might be aware the makers of scrum you know the makers of scrum when uh, uh, ken ken and michael both of them when they came up with the entire um, scrum framework believe me when they were developing the scrum framework do you know what they did in the scrum framework you may not see um storytelling or empathy or intuitiveness or visual things anywhere in your scrum framework but you would be i'm i'm very delighted to tell you they actually scrum framework was formed out of design thinking and i'll tell you what happened you know uh, these people were were there in huge labs and they were forming a way to create a software development life cycle and there were a lot of developers out you know they were helping out there the first thing which um, which they asked the question the scrum framework makers to themselves what are we going to do how do we divide these people do we divide these people who are there hundred or people ourselves or let's do one thing let us make them divide themselves between each other so they brought all these 100 100 developers 
in one woman said hello in next half an hour you all are going to divide yourselves amongst each other we will come back in half an hour tell us how many groups we are after half an hour the makers of the scrum came and they saw there were around uh, uh, 10 odd groups of different numbers now those groups were made by whom the developers themselves the framework which we are going to talk the scrum framework is going to be used by whom the developers themselves so who are we to organize them let them be self organized and this was the start of the create scrum framework which came by a design thinking activity so scrums both happen through design thinking i would say and the makers have very uh, there are a lot of videos where they have uh, you know uh, very publicly mentioned about why it is important to for them lot of organizations today uh, airbnb is just one case which i gave you there are many companies um, who use design thinking i myself uh, practice it in i practice it in my employer uh, where i work for. there are many companies um, who are actively investing in design thinking today and storyboarding is a very important part of it. if you ask me i think it's the crux of it um if you are not if you don't have a very visually intuitively made prototype guys you are not going to make this activity successful the whole success and failure of your entire you know see you might have observed something very well in your observations in your interviews but unless and until you have actually you know portrayed that on your whiteboard and you have come up with your connecting the dots with the right narrative and n number of such narratives you are not going to come up with a prototype and your your design thing is not going to be successful hence to me this activity of storyboarding whenever i take design thinking sessions whether it is one day two day storyboarding is actually more than 3 hours for me you know this is this is uh, we are discussing this in one minute and a half hour with the help of the airbnb case but when when i actually do the sessions i actually uh, you know do it for 3 hours where people do it on a post it and we actually do that it has to take some time 20 to 30 minutes is the time which is required generally to come up with one story board you know one story board which involves your discussion brainstorming creating characters creating scenes and everything but it needs to be enhanced so you give more 30 minutes to it now it goes on so this is basically at towards the end i mean uh, before i kind of summarize what all we discussed today i would love to if you have any questions at this point for me tool as a use coder is a very oh, you can create lot of colors lot of characters and you can put those colors to your scene and you can make amazing storyboards um some of you may have also worked with mural um there is a tool jira also but jira i wouldn't subscribe much for storyboarding jira is much more i would say beneficial for a framework like scrum or canva um, but yes of course uh, mural and storyboarder and there are some proprietary tools also which you can use so uh, i would appreciate of course if you have a question if you can type your question and i can uh, throw some 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 light. Maybe my thoughts on uh, uh, this entire concept. But why do you type your question again? To in a very uh, one liner, my my definition or our definition or our understanding of this storyboarding or storytelling is a intuitive, intuitive approach or I would say intuitive thought process of visually creating or creating visually appealing. plots or scenes for a user journey and then enhancing this on your pattern iterative that's entire storyboarding for you user journey intuitive visually narrative user journey intuitive visually narrative these these are the crux of it remember you remove one word from it and you won't be able to come up with a storyboard 
you won't be able to come up with what you actually called as a storytelling. Any, any, any questions? Uh, if you, if you want to just push off or any, uh, any doubt you have or any thought you want to, you want to discuss. Of course, um, just to mention again, I will be sharing. Of course, I've mentioned it to Professor uh, Amadas sir that uh, this uh, plot is there. Uh, to this uh, deck is there. Uh, there is one more uh, ebook, sort of. I have uh, given as a post read. It is an you know like a subset of a popular ebook, uh, which I have shared uh, with the PIT with Professor Amadas, which he will share with you. I would love if you uh, love to read the, you know, the prototyping part of it because that is the uh, whatever we discuss right now. You will hear that even in that ebook. Somebody asked me which step of DT does it fit in. You know, I would say, Nalin, again coming back to the point which we just mentioned. The moment you have understood the problem, to so the moment you know, like this, we discussed even in this slide. The moment you know that coming back to our Airbnb case, I can't start illustrating or I can't start identifying my characters and these subplots until I know what is the problem. See, less sales is the you can say the uh, definitely the um, the outcome of the problem. But is it the root cause? No. We have to find the root cause. We have to find what is the actual trigger for this problem. So unless Somebody, you know, really, uh, I would say, understands the root cause. And there are many ways to do the root cause analysis. There are many ways to, I'm sure you might have learned and understood that in your uh, previous sessions of problem solving. I'm sure they must be a part of this uh, ATEL program. Uh, the moment your problem, solve, uh, uh, understanding the problem activity is over, I say, start with your storyboard. Yes, analyze stage, not the solve stage. Because hello, you are going to solve your problem based on your storyboarding. You are going to trying to solve your problem based on your storyboard. So that is where the moment you start, you know, plotting your ideas, the moment you start putting your characters, the moment you start putting a narrative, you will be able to come up to a commercially viable prototype idea, which I called as a level zero prototype. So there can be level one, there can be level two. Like there can be level N prototype. Finally, that level N prototype is something which you need to validate in. Yes. The next question is about, yeah, where do we, are there any colleges providing degrees in design thinking? Yes, there are uh, internationally, nationally also. Nationally, if you ask me, there are a <clears throat> lot of business schools because I myself, I have done my B school as well as I've taught in B schools. Uh, for design thinking. So it's a part of their curriculum, uh, design thinking and business design. Having said that, if you really want to do a certification program in design thinking and business design, you can go to any of the business schools on their website. I wouldn't name anyone because I know that there are many of them. Um, if you ask me, I have done uh, my business school was Wellinger Institute of Management. They do have it. Indian School of Business have it. Um, you know, a lot of business schools have design thinking ingrained in their curriculum today. Uh, there are a lot of private uh, certification programs also, you know, which you would love to explore. So, um, okay, there was certain more questions. I'll take one by one. What is the career potential of design thinking specialization? Wonderful question. Um, today at this point of time, because <coughs> Let me also tell you that I'm also actively, um, you know, a design thinking practitioner. There is a lot of potential to a design thinking consultant. You can be a management consultant. A, you know, you can work with uh, big fours like EY, Deloitte, KPMG. Uh, you know, um, also you can work with organizations like banks, investment banks, or the IT majors. Uh, wherever. You know, there, nowadays there are roles like design thinking coach, you know, right there in the organization. Now, those coach not necessarily mean coaching, coaching, okay? Those coach meaning that those will ensure that design thinking is practiced in your in your organization. 
So I would say there is a lot of career potential. They are very handsomely paid as well. So believe me, it's it's a huge potential. You can connect with me personally on Inst- uh, links, LinkedIn, and uh, you know uh, I can share with you if I have any job openings which I get for design thinking. But yeah, so this would be the career potential question. Any other question? Okay, feel free if you have any other question about design thinking. Uh, a so, lot of people ask. Yes. Yes, somebody is asking a question. Yes. Hello. Please. Sir, good afternoon, sir. I am Janakiram from Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry that I have joined little late, so certain points I missed it. So no, no, maybe uh, I'm asking to understand the whole concept of storyboard uh, to by this question, sir. Uh, when we are writing a storyboard, outcome of our observation or observation itself we have to write. Which one we have to write? Outcome of our observation. You said intuitive. Yes. So once you observe something and observe. and our perception will be writing on the board or observation itself you have to write your perception on the story okay uh, get uh, understand one thing uh, janakiram right am i janakiram right janakiram yes uh, you know what outcome of your observation and there can be multiple such outcomes okay hmm. will be fine tuned as you go ahead in your iterations okay will be enhanced and refined later on as you progress what you have to put in the storyboard first is your actual observations the characters the the user journey start points as you see and that's where that that's that's the where you can say that's the start of your pattern of the uh, you know of the entire enhancement or refining activity now as a storyboarder you will refine this whole storyboard or this user journey maybe n number of times that's when your observations will be kind of fit in uh, more precisely with, will be connected with your outcomes so i would say when you start with the storyboard forget about the outcomes completely forget about the outcome just go berserk and put what all things you see what all observations you see if you think about the outcomes you're not going to uh, uh, think about the uh, you know the actual uh, uh, plot and what the problem you're trying to understand like in the airbnb case when i was there at the flat i was watching what i was see remember i was using the word intensely nice flat a very nice apartment why i was using that word because that was my observation that was the start point of my prototype which was you know coming so i know what you're talking about observation and insight these are the two different things let the park that insight aside for some time put your observations your intuition in visually appealing format and then give a narrative to it yes i hope i have uh, i have answered your question or thank you very much sir thank you very yes. much okay. uh, sir can i have your mail id to send some of my doubts Oh yeah, sure, sure. So I'm I'm just putting my email ID here itself, kalpakshan at uh, at the gmail dot com. You all are feel free to feel free to share any kind of questions, or if you want to just discuss with me, it's absolutely fine. Um, I'll be delighted to. This is my favorite. Storyboarding is my favorite part of design thinking, but even otherwise, also, if you have any questions about design thinking as whole, if you want to know. um since i've been actually also actively working in the corporates on design thinking assignments um a lot of times i do have the real hand uh you know what's actually going on there so i can uh, of course let you know that as well so feel free to connect but yeah in case any other questions on storyboard if they are well and good yes again i'm saying that ebook subset of ebook i have just extracted uh, from you because i love the way prototyping was explained in that book uh, you can buy that book online of course um, it's a good book for design thinking as a whole but i want you to explicitly read prototyping part so you know more about characters you know more about user journey 
you know more about the actual uh, prototyping. Uh, the uh, it's a handbook of uh, design thinking. Uh, it's titled the same thing. I think Professor Ambadas, I think uh, you would be sharing that ebook with. Uh, yeah, I'll just tell you the title. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's Handbook of Design Thinking. Uh, I'll also tell you the author's name. There are many, uh, of course, many ebooks. If you go on IDEO sites also. So, Christian Mueller, it's a very famous uh, book on design thinking. I would say this is more like a pocket friendly book. It's not a very detailed also. It's not like a black book, but it is still a very good book, which will give you a lot of good insights about design thinking. What I what I'll be sharing with you, like what Samadas, I have just extracted a, a, you know, like a subset of it just for your reading, because I wanted you to read the prototyping part. But of course, you can I think purchase it's a Kindle edition or the actual edition. Any any other question or any other points? I've given my email ID, but you all can feel free to connect. I would also take this opportunity before I wind up uh, to thank uh, VIT for because design thinking is my favorite subject uh, and I have done one design thinking session in uh, VIT in the past um, uh, for students that was for engineering students. But uh, you know, in my opinion, this word is often abused because a lot of people in the corporates I'm talking about, they say that they are doing design thinking and they say, hey, we are not getting any results from design thinking. And that's where I, you know, at such times you need a design thinking consultant or a coach to come into picture and tell them that what can actually be an efficacy or benefits of design thinking. So I would say, I would thank um, VIT for doing this program. Of uh, It's a very, very adorable program where I'm sure different experts have given their thoughts. People need to know more about design thinking and know it in the right way, not just for the heck of it, but know the concepts, know the pattern, know that you can't, like for example, in storyboarding, when I said intuitive, visual, narrative, you cannot take intuitiveness out of storyboarding, then I won't call it storyboarding. Similarly, you can't take visual aspect out of storyboarding and you have to put kind of and you can't take narrative out of storyboarding. So all these three ingredients should be there a part of your storyboarding. So hence, I would say I would be, uh, that's why I was saying I'm very thankful to VIT. And I also thank uh, Professor um, Minakshi Ma'am for uh, inviting me for this forum and uh, giving me an opportunity to connect with you all uh, for this uh, storyboarding session. I wanted to keep it not because I know this is after um, lunch session. Uh, the moment ma'am told me, I was a bit like, no, I, mean, I don't want to make it like too long. But yeah, this PPT is there for you. Um, I think Professor Madhas will share this material with you. You can use it uh, for your sessions also um, if you want to conduct. And feel free to reach out to me anytime if you have any questions. Uh, I think that would be up from my side unless you have any questions. And I think we are pretty much within the time. 27. Reena, madam. Yes. Uh, yes, Kalpak sir, we are very much on time. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of Vidya Lanka, Dhyanpi Trust, uh, to thank you for delivering such an enriching session on storyboarding and storytelling. Uh, I'm sure that all the participants uh, have got a very good understanding of uh, various ingredients of storyboarding, such as visual, uh, narrative, and uh, um, intuitive. Uh, intuitive. I'm so sorry. Intuitive, visual, and narrative. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for sparing uh, your time, valuable time, and spending a, a very good afternoon with us and enriching us. So thank you so much, Mr. Kalpak Sawa. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, the whole team of VIT. It's my uh, alma mater, so I have a special connection. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.
So all the participants, uh, I declare the session for today as uh, done. Uh, we can, uh, we will meet tomorrow for our uh, day four of Atal FDP. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Stay safe.